been coming, but I am here. Yes, 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 I'm here. Yes, 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 I'm here. I'll give it a few minutes to see. Ooh, good. Shaking it loose, guys, to see if anyone's going to join me. Um, I didn't want to get more behind, so I am here. Yes, I am here. I am here. I drank my tea. I am now on water. So, yes, 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 yes. The water is flowing. Everything is beautiful. Hopefully, all is well. We'll give it about another minute and a half while I see who actually is going to join me, if any. After midnight tonight but I'm gonna give it about 45 more seconds guys and then we are off and running yes we are seconds to count down. Yay. And five, four, three, two, one. Let's get started, everyone. I am here. I am Pastor White Trees Harris, and we have been traveling through the Old Testament in a year. We have completed Genesis, Exodus, and Leviticus. We are throwing down. I'm telling you, you should be so excited if you've been on this journey with me and you have read even most of it, okay? Maybe you skipped a chapter here and there. But if you have read most of it, you should be very proud of yourself because we have read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. We have made it through three books of the Bible and we are now moving into numbers. Um, and let's see, Genesis um, sort of, the first through the 11th chapter uh, covered the eons of time, right? Uh, so we don't really know how long that period of time was from chapter 1 through chapter 11. Uh, but after that, as soon as it starts talking about Abraham, that time spans about a 300-year period. So we can say in Genesis, we covered 300 plus years. And then we moved to Exodus, and Exodus really only covered one year. Okay, so... We went to cover 300 plus through eternity years um, to in Exodus, it covered one year. And then we moved from there to Leviticus, which covered one month of time, right? Um, and the span of things is, you know, we started with the creation of Adam and Eve, went down uh, through God wanting to destroy, destroy the world um, and, you know, only saving Noah and his family, went from there to Abraham. Um, and his miraculous story um, of um, finally being able to give birth. Um, and so we went there from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob. Uh, we got lots of covenants between um, God and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob of a promised land that was to come. Fast forward from there, we went to Moses, who was born um, and raised in Pharaoh's household by Pharaoh's daughter, um, and then ends up being uh, um, the one who actually comes back. And um, um, through him, God delivered the Israelites from 400 years of bondage. 
Um, so many stories that I skipped along the way, but just give you a little small refresh, of course, of where we've been. And so then uh, they end up in the wilderness, right? Because uh, Pharaoh's army drowned in the Red Sea. Yes. <laughs> Um, I got old songs down in my soul. I'm telling you, they down in my soul. Um, uh, because Pharaoh's army was drowned in the Red Sea, so they ended up in the wilderness. Um, and so now they've been in this wilderness about 13 months, right? Because Exodus spanned about 12 months. Uh, Leviticus spanned about a month. Um, pretty much they've just been getting instruction from God during these 13 months. They knew um, nothing but slavery. Remember, there was 400 years of slavery. So there was generations of slavery. They knew nothing but slavery. So um, quite naturally, they got to uh, the wilderness and was like, yes, no one has rule over us. And then here come Moses with all these rules, right? So imagine how they must have felt. They had to get used to the fact um, of allowing God to be their God and have rule over them. And that's pretty much what um, this whole wilderness experience was supposed to be about. It was supposed to be them learning God and learning how to trust in God and follow and uh, obey his commands. And it was supposed to be a transitional period between slavery and the promised land. It was supposed to last not long. Uh, they had already been there 13 months. God was just about ready to take them into the promised land. It wasn't supposed to uh, end up being the 40 years that it ended up being. But we will find out in this book of the Bible why. So if you ever wanted to know why, uh, the Israelites ended up spending 40 years in the wilderness in what was supposed to be a transitional period. Um, this is where we're going to find that out. And so Numbers actually spans um, 38 years. <laughs> um, and so we had, you know, the 300 plus years of Exodus. We had the, I mean, of uh, Genesis. We had the one year of Exodus. We had the one month of Leviticus. And now we're in um, Numbers and it spans 38 years. Um, and so we're going to find out a lot about what happens in Numbers, but um, in keeping true to its name, the first few chapters um, that we read are going to be all about numbers. So um, this is um, God wanting to number the Israelites. Um, and so it starts off in chapter one with God saying, hey, count everybody who is 20 years or older. Everybody, every male, wait a minute, every male that is 20 years of older. I want you to count, but I want you to count by tribes. So I don't want you just to go around one, two, three, four, five, six, but I want you to get everybody in their particular tribes and then count among tribes how many have um, uh, men who are 20 years or older. And God was allowing this census to be done uh, for uh, military purposes. I want to see how many fighting men I have um, you know, because we're going to be going to war. We got to conquer some land. So I need to know what's going on. And so God said, you don't have to do this by yourself, though. Moses, Aaron, you don't have to do the county by yourself. Choose somebody. As a matter of fact, no, you don't choose anybody. I, God, am going to choose the man that you need to use in every tribe to help you count. And so God gives them a list of names in every tribe. So there was a man in every tribe. So it's almost like God appointed, um, I don't know, I guess in our time we would call it a governor over each of the tribes and said, hey, use this guy who's going to help you count. And so uh, there's a long list of names in chapter one of tribe by tribe. What you may have noticed, um, and if you didn't notice it while you were reading it, if you read the whole chapter, you found out why. <coughs> But you still may have been wondering, how was that still be able to be 12 tribes? Because the tribe of Levi is not included in this list that uh, God gives to Moses. There's no tribe of Israel there. I mean, no tribe of Levi there. And so why weren't the Levites counted? Where if you read the last uh, few verses of chapter 1, it tells you because 
the Levi, the Levites were not um, to be fighting men. They were not to be included in the military. They were not to be included in um, the army, as we would call it. And because of that, they weren't to be counted in this particular census. And so what God did, because you're like, if, he, if we had 12 tribes and we take out one, then shouldn't we just have 11? How is there still 12? Well, what God did was not only did he take Levi out, but he took Joseph out. And you'll see there's no tribe of Joseph in there either. Um, and he replaced the tribe of Levi and the tribe of Joseph with Joseph's two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And so there will be a tribe of Manasseh and a tribe of Ephraim, but there will not be a tribe of Joseph. And the Levites will be um, uh, separated because they are to take care of, and we're going to come to that in a few minutes, but they are to take care of the tabernacle. And so God counts, and um, he, has the, he has each of them count. Um, so all each of the governors, if you will, count, and um, what they come up with as a total is 603,550 men who are 20 years or older. So they have an army of 603,550 men. In um, chapter 2, what he does is he arranges how they're going to set up their camps. And so um, you have to remember that the tabernacle was in the center of the camp, right? The tabernacle was in the center. Um, and so um, he put some tribes to um, the east, right? So on the east of that, so, you know, we know, we do know north, south, east, and west, right? East is to the right, west is to the left, uh, north is up and south is down, all right? And so if you think of it like that, um, east, on the east side of the camp, depending on which where you are, north or south, but on the east side of the camp would be um, Judah, Issachar, um, and Zebulun. Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. They were going to be on the east side of the camp. So that means that every time, I remember they were nomads, they moved around, right? But every time they moved around, however they were walking or whatever, uh, when, it when it came time to set up camp, the um, these three tribes had to make sure that they always set their tents on the east side. The tabernacle was the um, compass, so to speak, right? Not compass, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the focal point, I can't think of the word I'm looking for, but it's the center. Um, and so once, the, once it was established where the tabernacle was gonna be set, then these three tribes had to always be to the east of it, and that was Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. And then to the south of the campus, so we got east, and remember south is down here, we're going this way. I don't know if you noticed, right? We're going this way. So to the south of the camp was to be Reuben, Simeon, and Gad. Reuben, Simeon, and Gad. So there was three tribes on the east, there's three tribes on uh, the south side. And that was Ruby and Sim Simeon and Gad. And all of their men were assigned to camp there. Then they were um, setting up the Levites. And the Levites were to set up around the tabernacle. So around the tabernacle is where the Levites were. So um, we're going to get more into detail in how they are. Because it was even a set way they were to be around the tabernacle. But they were going to be around the tabernacle. So we had the south. Um, we have the east. We have the south. Now we're moving to the west, right? On the west um, would be Ephraim, uh, Manasseh, and Benjamin. Ephraim, Manasseh, and Benjamin. They were to set up on the south side. Um, I'm sorry, on the west side. So we have east, uh, south, west. Uh, we have all those set off. And then on the north side would be the divisions of the camp of Dan, right? So that's Dan, who else? Asher and Naphtali. Dan, Asher, and Naphtali. So we went around this way. East, south, west, north, right? And so as you can see, it was 12 tribes of Israel. Three were on the east of the tabernacle. Three were to the south of the tabernacle. Three were to the west of the tabernacle. And three were to the north of the tabernacle. And so that was the way that they were to be assigned around the tabernacle. Um, and that's pretty much what chapter 2 is talking about. Um, and then chapter 3, 
Um, it, it starts telling you about Aaron and his sons, right? And the importance of Aaron and his son, Aaron and his sons. Um, and what we learn here, it reiterates, first of all, that Aaron started off with four sons. And remember, he started off with four sons, but Nadab and Abihu um, decided that they wanted to burn strange fire to the Lord. Um, they wanted to do uh, what was not ordained for them to do, and the Lord took them. They were killed right on the spot. They didn't have any children, um, and so now the priesthood would lie in the hands of Eleazar and Ithamar, who were Aaron's other two sons. Um, and so this chapter, in chapter 3, it is about counting the Levites. Um, and so chapter 2 is about counting all the other tribes. Remember, uh, the Levites and Joseph was taken out, Manasseh and Ephraim was put in, but the Levites still needed to be counted. Interestingly enough, though, because they were not uh, being counted for battle or for war, they were counted um, everyone two months old and above. Two months old and above. If you were two months old and above, you were counted in this count. And so um, they, they, they go through, they count um, by clan. Um, so they have, um, just like the Israelites are broken up into 12 tribes, they actually have broken up the Levites into, excuse me, four clans. And the four clans they broke them into was um, Gershon, I'm sorry, three clans, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Aaron and Moses were the fourth clan. But Goshen, uh, Gershon, we'll say, Kohath, and Merari. And they broke them into this. And then um, they each were set up. So remember I told you that the um, Levites were going to be around the tabernacle. So they set their tents up around the tabernacle. But not just any kind of way. You didn't just pick a spot and go set your tent up. There was a way, an order. God is a very orderly God. And if you haven't learned anything else, you should learn that God is an orderly God. And so he put Gershom, um, they were setting up their tents on the west. And so um, on the west side, um, Gershom set up their tents. And then he told them exactly what they would be responsible for. They were going to be responsible for the care of the tabernacle and the tent and the curtains. And then uh, we're going to learn more about um, that in chapter 4. And then the Kohathites, they were to be set up on the south side of the temple. So the Kohathites were here. So we have the Gershonites here and the Kohathites here at the south side of the temple. Um, and then it tells you that they were responsible to taking care of the ark, the tabernacle, and the lampstand, the altars, and all of the stuff pretty much that was inside the tabernacle. And then the Merorites, they were to set up their tent on the north side, right? So we got south, we got west, we got north, right? Um, and they were to set up on the, the north side, and they were to take care of the frames, the the crossbars, the posts, the bases, the equipment, and everything related to their... So after everything else was gone, those poles and posts and everything that was making the tent stay up, they were responsible for those things. And then finally, Moses and Aaron and his sons were to camp on the east, right? Um, the Bible says they were to camp where the sun rose and the sun rises in the east, right? And so they were to camp there toward the sunrise and they were in the front of the tent of meeting, right? So they traveled in the front of the tent of meeting or the tabernacle. Um, it was very important that no one else touched anything that had to do um, with this tabernacle but the Levites. Um, um, that was extremely important to the Lord. It is reiterated so many times in the text that we are reading. Um, basically, he says, don't make me kill them. You better keep them away from my sacred items, right? And that's said over and over again. And the total number of Levites was 22,000. And if you're like me and you're mathy, you might say, whoa, I added up all those numbers, Pastor White Trees, and they didn't add to 22,000. Um, and if you did, you will find that the numbers that they gave you specifically in the text do not add to 22,000. They add to 22,300. And um, theologians have said that they believe that it was a typographical 
error or some fading of some ink over time because the Greek um, number for uh, uh, six is SLS and the Greek number for three is SS. So they believe like just the writing or how it was done or the fading over time and that that number really should have been 8,300 Kohathites and not 8,600 Kohathites. And if you do have that number to be 8,300 Kohathites, then you do get the exact 22,000 um, that is spoken of at the end of um, verse 39. Um, but then what happens? Why are we numbering? Well, we're numbering the Levites because um, God has decided that instead of taking the firstborn as his, he's going to take the Levites as his. So he's doing this exchange, so to speak, this swap. Um, and, um, and most theologians believe that it's talking about the firstborn that would have been born while they were on this journey. So during their 13 month period, um, how many firstborn were born after they left Egypt. He wanted to redeem those with the Levites. Um, and what we find is that there were 22,273 firstborns um, that were born um, while they were in the wilderness this year um, or this 13 months. And so he's going to redeem those 22,273. In other words, you don't have to give your firstborn to me anymore. I'm going to redeem those. You, you know, um, and now instead of those, the firstborn being the caretakers of the temple or whatever that I asked for them to be caretaker over, um, now the Levites is going to retake that responsibility. The problem was there were 22,000 Levites and 22,273, um, uh, firstborn. So what they did was they did an exchange for an exchange on the 22,000, uh, but of the 273 that was left over, um, they had to, to actually uh, pay redemption money for those 273. So they had to pay an extra price um, on top. And so because you don't have the body to give, then you give in monetary worth. And that's what was done. Um, and it says here that they um, were able to do that and they got 1,365 shekels by doing that um, which is here I'm trying to tell you how much it is uh, I may have to find it for you later uh, but it's a lot of money okay it's a lot of money all right so then finally in chapter 4 um, after we do this swap of the uh, firstborn for the Levites um, it goes into very detail over what each uh, clan is going to be doing. So it starts with the Kohathites and it tells you exactly what the Kohathites are going to be doing. And this is where uh, it is reiterated over and over again. Do not make sure that you do not let them touch anything. And so before the Kohathites could even come in and move anything, and remember they're responsible for the ark and the candle and the lampstand and, and you know, just everything, right? Um, the table, everything. Um, but before they could come and touch any of that, um, Moses and Aaron had to take some stuff down, wrap it in a certain way, because remember this is holy. Holy, holy, and, and I don't care who you are. If you're not a priest, then you need to watch how you handle the holy things is what was being said. And so uh, Moses had to come and Aaron had to come prepare the things for travel um, so that the person who came in to get the things to travel wouldn't die. And remember, they couldn't touch the Ark of the Covenant. They couldn't touch the... Um, the table. Um, there were lots of things that they just put poles in those. Remember, we show pictures. They put poles on the side, and they would have to carry those poles up on their shoulders um, and, and make sure that they never touch um, the Ark of the Covenant or the Most Holy Things or that they would surely die. Now, this is being said here. Here it's being said, we're going to see this come to play in David's time way in the future. But here it said, God is making the law. I need you to remember this because when uh, we get to David's time, y'all going to be talking about, oh, it's so unfair. I don't know how God could do that. Why would God? God said it here. No one is to touch. No one is to touch. No one is to touch. But the priest, no one is to touch. 
but the Levites. No one is to touch. No one is to touch. No one is to touch. Obedience is going to be very, very important in that passage of scripture. Um, and then it goes on to describe uh, what the Gershonites will be doing. Um, they are to take everything that's a curtain, that's, you know, all of the cloths and the curtains and the things that the curtains are held up with. Um, they are to um, the curtains that uh, surround the whole place, the curtains that are the doorway, just everything, right? Um, all of the cloth material, if you will, um, they were supposed to be responsible for. And then finally, you have the mirror rights, who they came in, um, all the stuff on the inside was gone, all of the curtains were gone. Um, but after all of that was done, there were still the posts um, that you had to stake down and the, the rope that you had to, you know, uh, fixate and all these things that made the tent sit up in the first place. Somebody had to be responsible for getting all of those uh, to the next spot and be ready to set it all back up quickly so that uh, the tabernacle could go back up. And so uh, the Merorites, that is what they were known for. Um, and because God is just so awesome and so great, um, he made sure that every person had a job. Every person had something to do. Every person knew what they were responsible for. When they finished the census, it was 8,000, I think, um, and uh, where is that number? But I think 8,000, here it is, 8,580. It took 8,580 men to set up the tabernacle. Wait a minute. I want you to focus in here. I want you to really try to imagine in your mind 8,580 people just to put the church up every week. Can you imagine? Right, just to just to get that tabernacle functioning every week, there were eight thousand five hundred and eighty people, and each of them had their own specific job, the specific thing that they need to do. Um, I think that that is awesome. Each was assigned his work and told what to carry, and that is our memory verse. If you go to uh, chapter four, verse forty nine, chapter four, verse forty nine, it says. At the Lord's command, through Moses, each was assigned his work and told what to carry. Um, I'm going to stop there. It's more, but I'm going to stop there because I want you to know God has not changed. He has not changed. We have each been assigned to work. No, we're not building a tabernacle. Um, you know, no, we don't have to carry a tent peg. No, we don't have to carry the Ark of the Covenant up on our shoulders. We don't have to carry the table and make sure the bread don't fall because God said don't even take the bread from the table. But we each have an assigned work and we need to find out what our assigned duty is um, so that we can get to doing the business of the Lord the way he designed for us to do it. God is meticulous and I think if you don't understand or um, um, get anything else out of reading the Old Testament, and especially reading Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, if you don't get anything else out of this, except that our God is a meticulous God, then you have won. You need to understand how meticulous God, how, how um, important the little things are, how it's important um, who carries what and that everyone has an assignment and that everybody carries out the assignment that they have. That is super important. And so we want you to make sure uh, by making this a memory verse again, that's chapter four, verse 49, um, that it's at the Lord's command that you have been given this assignment. It's at the Lord's command that you have been given this assignment. And my fear is that there are some people out there who've been given assignments thinking that they came from their preacher or their pastor, their prophet, uh, their evangelist, their apostle, whoever, uh, but who have not been doing their assignment simply because of who assigned it, so they thought. But you need to understand that it wasn't the pastor, the preacher, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, none of the, the teacher, none of those were giving you this assignment. This assignment came from God himself. That's what it says, at the Lord's command, 
at the Lord's command. At the Lord's command, he has already given you an assignment. It is up to you to find out what that assignment is and to make sure that you're doing it. What would have happened if it was time to move uh, the trumpet sound or the horn blared or whatever noise they made to let a, a, a almost three million people know that it was time to move. So whatever that noise was that they made when it was time to move, what if everybody was just running around trying to remember what the Lord said? Okay, wait a minute. What was I supposed to grab? Where am I supposed to grab the curtain? Oh Lord, it's time to go. Okay, wait, wait. I think I'm supposed to grab. Wait, wait. I don't know. And then they get all the way to the next destination and they don't have everything. Uh oh. The Lord just took me somewhere. You got to follow the assignment in your current destination. You got to learn the assignment, know what it is, so that when you get to the next destination, you will know what to do. This has been a learning period for TLC. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This has been a learning period. For TLC. This has been a learning period for TLC. We needed to learn everything that we could learn in this period so that when we get to the next destination, we will know what to do. We'll know how to set it up. We will know how to uh, put it together. We will know who has what piece and where it goes. All of those things will be known, uh, but only if we find our assignment and carry it out now. Now is the time to learn your assignment. Now is the time to put forth the effort. Now is the time to say, Lord, what do you want me to do in this ministry? Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. Look, God is good. He is awesome. He is great. Hopefully you got something out of that, especially that N word right there that the Lord just kind of snuck up on you. I hope you really take some time to uh, flesh out that word because that's an important word in the Lord. But listen, I want to let you know that I love you and God loves you too. I will be back hopefully tomorrow um, catching up and we'll be all catch, caught up by the time we come back to this on Monday. But until next time, I love you um, and God loves you too and you'll be blessed, saints. In Jesus' name.